Hey everyone. What do I got here for you today, huh? Well, this is my standard grab and go rifle bag. Some of you have kind of like seen it in the backgrounds of some other videos. And sometimes if you're out shooting with me, you've seen it, of course. What actually do I keep in this kit? I've told people I was gonna go over it in the past. It is kind of my perfect everything in one spot. If I have to just bounce out of the house in a rush, if there's something very wrong, if there's nothing wrong at all, if I'm just going to the range or going to a match, this is everything. This is a rifle, a pistol, and every bit of precious that I could need to drive it properly. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what's in here, what I think. I mean, this is like, God, how many times have you seen these videos? Here's what you need to pack in your kit and go out and buy this shit. Uh, you know, this is just what works for me. I'll give you like the Paul Harrell speech. Uh, I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm telling you what I do. And if you like any of the things that I do, uh, maybe they work for you. If not, you know, tell me I'm a freaking Nimrod down in the comments because that drives engagement. Hey, uh, hey, what are you doing over there? Oh, <laughs> uh, I was just writing my preemptive counter argument about how you're wrong. But yeah, here we go. Let's take a peek inside the bag. It is uh, one that serves me very well. My wife has one exactly like it with basically the same exact loadout in there for her as well. So... Let's get to it. Okay, so this bag, which you can see, of course, has nice backpack straps and carry straps, basically splits down the middle into two very large pouches in here. Insides are all soft side Velcro for your pew pew tactical uh, special moto patches that make everything shoot better on you, right? But in the top half and the bottom half, you can split up a pretty good AR platform rifle of any kind. So. What do I have here? Obviously, I've got my lower on the stoner rifle. What do I have here? I've got my what would stoner do upper. So yes, even though I'm not storing it, assembled, two pins and your rock and roll. I do have a few other accessories up here, little bits and bobs. One is a small attachable brass catcher. This is depending on what I'm doing at a range or where I'm going. It's nice to be able to have that. It just snaps on with a little detent that lives on the rail and never is in my way. And the other side, rifle does need a sling, so that can easily be thrown on there, down the middle, a few magazines. Now, depending on your state of residence, you may or may not be able to keep them loaded, depending on where you're driving around. Same thing goes for the pistol mags. But I have enough gear right here that I can meaningfully plink at the range, shoot a match, you name it. In this long side, now we're getting into simple stuff to have around. You can fit it easily. I recommend having a good rod or even just a dowel that you can drive down through your muzzle in the event of problems. If you ever have to bash a case out of there or something gets stuck, doesn't extract, you get some kind of bore obstruction, not having a ramrod can really wreck a range day or a match. So is that it? Is that everything? No, definitely not. Now we get into all the little good bits in the front pouches, starting with Health and safety, right up top. Always have eyes, always have a little couple of little ears down in here as well. In my small pistol match bag is where I keep the better set of eyes, the better earplugs, etc. But I always have, like, these are, these are cheap, you know? Like, they don't have to be the greatest glasses in the world. Just have something on you so you're not caught unaware at a range. And yes, you should always have a first aid kit on you. What do I keep in mind? Let's take a quick look. All right, bandage, better compression bandage with the quick clot on it, the Israeli bandage, tourniquet, small band-aids, you know, burn gel, little uh, packets of triple antibiotic ointment, the bumps and bruises and little owies and stuff, you're more likely to get that on the range than a horrible wound, some gloves, airway barrier. This guy right here, literally wrapped on an old dowel. If you're not familiar, look how stiff this is with Luco tape. This is a magnificent, like super hard to stick on, durable as hell. It's not really a bandage. It's not really athletic tape. Just look, I'll, again, I'll put it down there, Luco tape. You can patch up just about anything that goes wrong with you with this and some gauze. And again, we have the Israeli bandage, but also some Sealock, some quick clot. This is not a fully featured IFAC, but it's pretty good for what I would need when I'm out on the range. 
All right, if the top part of this bag is for when things go wrong with humans, the rest of this bag is for when things go wrong with the guns. Service and accessories down here. One accessory, holster, not the absolute best holster, but it works perfectly fine for my pistol. By the way, where is my pistol? Well, it's hiding in here. You haven't spotted it yet. This is the service and repair pouch. I'm gonna enjoy taking this apart for you and seeing what's in there. If you haven't seen the Speed Bees loader for putting together the uh, pew particles into your Glock mags, especially your stick mags, watch the video on InRange talking about it. It's the best speed loader I've ever come across. Just a little bit more food for the Glock. I do have the magazine that was loaded, but I don't keep the mag in the Glock loaded because I keep it in the gun. That is back here in a little kind of hidden pouch, but yes, that is my match Glock. I can use that whenever I'm at the range plinking. Always have a lock or two around. You never know what environment you're gonna wind up in. You never know what state you're gonna drive through. Maybe you're gonna crash at a friend's house. They got kids in the house. Ha like we all have these. How many people have like a shelf of these? Cause you get them free when you buy your firearms in a lot of states. Throw one of these in your bag, never think about it until that day that you're visiting some relative or you just need to lock your gun for legal reasons. There you go. You're secure. You throw it through the chamber. You throw it through the, bar you know, the battery. Whatever you need to do, have one of these around for the one time in a million you need it. And of course, always having a few Sharpies, big end, little end. Whenever I'm at the range, I, I always invariably have to borrow one from Girl Glock or somebody because I never have them in there. I finally shoved them in here uh, last night because I'm sick of asking everyone else for them. What else is rattling? Oh my God. More freedom seeds. God, I feel like a rich man in this pandemic. And of course, rule number nine, Never go anywhere without a knife. And now, the service and repair kind of pack this. I mean, this is just some cheap in-flight amenities bag, right, that I got on an airplane. The moment you buy a gun, and again, I've started friends doing this, the moment you get your first gun of any kind, you start maintaining a little maintenance bag, a little supply and service bag. Starting off with cleaning. Is this a full cleaning kit? No, because you don't need a full cleaning kit. If you have a boar snake and if you have some break free, guess what? You can clean almost anything right there. Do I have a few more cleaning supplies? Sure I do. I've got some patches. I've got some, you know, just, I just use them to wipe frigging solvent around when I need to clean something off. But that's all you need. You know, that, maybe a toothbrush, a couple of Q-tips, who knows? Have, oh my God, have Allen keys have a hex tool around for little, like a site that you need to remount or some little widget or wonk it is coming loose and you can't tighten it down. Holy crap, put even the cheapest one you don't care about, a set of hex keys in your tool bag. PMAG covers. When you're flying, do you know that this is an acceptable way to transport ammunition on most major carriers? Why? Because the ammo is stored in a container that is meant to hold small arms ammunition. That's literally what this is. And if you have the dust cover on, the ammo is contained. It is covered. That is fine. I keep a spare one on me just because, you know, you can lose them. Spare batteries for my Hollow Sun. I don't really need them that often. The Hollow Sun is great on battery management, but I have some. Ah, uh, yes. For training, if you've seen my laser training videos, this is the 223 by Laser Light that works very nicely. And the little modified hook that you can drop into a magazine, 3D printed for me by Jake, Eerie Quiet. Uh, I have a video, I will link it down below. Being able to do a little laser pew practice so I don't have to spend the expensive ammo, always nice. Snap cap, dry fire exercises, servicing, you name it. Brush, do I really use this much for cleaning? No, I mean, corroded, horrible corroded junk on that bolt. I can usually knock it off without resorting to that. Another brush for cleaning. Again, do I need them often? No. Having tiny pliers, man. Tiny pliers are a multi-tool for reefing on something, ripping on something. These have saved my butt at least once in the past. Another cool tool. I showed you the big ramrod, right? If you want to keep one that is pocket-sized, having a little rapid rod. Have you ever seen these? These, these, are, these are pretty tight, man. In the field, you basically pull tight on this, start cranking on this screw. Now, when that screw gets tightened down and pulls the cable that's in there, we now have a fully extended, straight and long, really nice cleaning rod for 
pushing patches through there, for clearing out obstructions. But the whole thing, once you loosen it up and let that cable come back out, collapses right down. People use these a lot when they're hunting. I keep one of these when I'm hunting. In fact, that's their whole shtick, right? A uh, barrel obstruction, a bore obstruction, if you get something in your gun in the field, ruins a whole day. Having one of these in your back pocket when you're hunting or having one of these in your gear bag when you're at the range, very nice and helpful. Also, speaking of being at the range, having a chamber flag, uh, I know that you can make your own. I know that a lot of ranges have them, but being able to positively and clearly show people, yes, my gun absolutely is cold, clear, safe. It's just being a good neighbor. Not gonna lie, I drank the Kool-Aid at one point or another, bought some chamber-made brushes. I literally don't think I have ever goddamn used these. Maybe, uh, who knows, maybe I'll give them away. You know what? At the end of this video, do you wanna, <laughs> do you wanna have AR brushes that you probably never ever fucking need? Uh, that's, that's, the, that's the giveaway in this video, just for all of you out there. If you're, on, if you're not familiar with this, right, look down the link below. If you're not entered into the contest for the giveaway, all my videos have a giveaway in them now if I can manage to do it. Uh, one of these or both of these brushes could be yours. Uh, so there you go. I'll ping you, I'll get in touch if you win that giveaway. Yay, it doesn't have to be in my bag anymore. Little tapping, hitting, poking tool. Tiny tools. I mentioned the hex keys, right? Not all of my accessories are straight hex. Some of them are Torx. This is what I mean, where if you ever get an accessory, a, a weapon light, a sight, you name it, and it comes with one of these tools, keep them in your bag, keep them with the gun, have a tool bag that you start building up and you always know, oh, that cheap friggin' thing that fits the, it's not metric, it's not, it's imperial, it's not standard, it's a Martian bit, you have it with the gun. <laughs> Blast from the past. What are these? Are these like Legionnaire helmets? Oh, we will battle in the Colosseum. No. Uh, who knows what these are? Somebody out there does, right? Yeah, stripper clip guides. Loading a firearm through the magazine, like loading a magazine with a stripper clip if you don't have the guide. Pain in the ass. Ooh, and now, I must say, if you're not familiar with the uh, Red Team Tools site, if you're not familiar with Lockpicking Lawyer, who has demonstrated tools like this before when I showed them to him. This is a hammerless striking tool. You don't need to have a big old wham, wham, wham. What is this for? It's two pieces of steel with a spring connecting them. So if I need to knock a pin, like let's say if I get a really, really jammed takedown pin or pivot pin, you line this right up, you pull, bam, bam, bam. This is a little sharp striking tool that you can get recalcitrant things out of spots where they don't belong. So that's about the size of it. That is everything that I keep in my accessories there. And it has solved many a problem for me when I'm on the range, either at a match or who knows, out in the field hunting or just, you know, needing a rifle for self-defense, you got to keep it running right. Well, there you have it. That's the range bag. I mentioned the pistol match bag. Maybe I'll do that in another video. I don't know. Uh, you already know what the prize is, right? It's those two little boar brushes. I wasn't trying to poo-poo them. They're, they're really nice. I bought them from Brownells uh, with my own money. Joel didn't give them to me or anything. But uh, yeah, no, they're, they're really cool. I just, I don't use them. Uh, maybe you shoot a lot of oddball, you know, AR platform stuff. Maybe you do weird things with... Uh, strange powders, maybe you are a crazy high-end match shooter, you know, maybe you're like Carl doing, uh, doing, doing crazy high power. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you want them. Anyway, that's what I'm giving away. I'm going to keep giving shit away because every one of you has been so cool. And every one of you in the comments, every one of you who tells me, Hey, I love this thing. I, I tried this something. It's thanks for sharing that. Like that's, that's why I do this again. Uh, no gods, no masters, just like, just like Carl on in range, right? This isn't a monetized channel. I just do it for fun, and I have fun whenever any one of you gets something out of it. So thanks for being there, and I will keep being here, and I'll catch you next time. Stay safe out there. Hey, everyone. What I got... Ugh, shit, man. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Come on.